Nearly seven months after Hurricane Maria cast communities into darkness, residents in the central mountain village of Cielos have something to celebrate. Tonight, reporter Olivia Richard, who, take, who traveled to Puerto Rico, takes on one family's journey of life without power. Some families in Puerto Rico are celebrating the return of something they never thought would come back, the electricity. I spent time with one family for whom every day without power was a matter of life or death. Flow water over here and another over there, and the living room began flooding and so did the kitchen and everywhere, and all I was worried about was Melissa. I spent the time of the hurricane sitting on the sofa with my daughter. The entire world was sleeping and snoring, and Melissa, her brother and I stayed up till the morning. The night Hurricane Maria swept through the small mountain town of Cielos is a moment in time Martha Rivera says she'll never forget. That night, in addition to losing power, she almost lost her daughter. There was a moment when she started coughing and she didn't stop. I was afraid I had to suction the fluid from her throat, but there was still fluid. Doctors diagnosed Melissa with severe scoliosis, cerebral palsy, and a seizure condition when she was just a child. Since the storm, caring for her disabled daughter has been much more difficult. With the hurricane, our lives totally change. Currently, we do not know what to do. We need a strong generator because she needs AC 24-7. Her life depends on it. She uses suction machines and therapy machines. The devices that keep Melissa alive rely on power, something the family hasn't been with for more than half a year. The Rios Rivera family says every day without electricity is the continuation of a nightmare. My biggest fear is that I stay sleeping and when I wake up, she's not breathing anymore. That's why I don't sleep. For many families in Puerto Rico's mountain communities, generators have become a necessary yet expensive part of life. It's four times more to pay for gas than the monthly electric bill. The family relies on two generators, one on loan by a relative who fled to the States, the other more than 14 years old. And according to Martha, it's due to fail at any moment. My husband, what he receives from Social Security is $700 a month. That is why he wakes up in the morning. And the money that he makes that day is the same that he uses to pay for the gasoline that day. Frustrated with a system and government many feel are both inefficient and ineffective, Martha says she can't understand why residents in the mountain communities still are without power. This is not possible. How do some people have light and others don't if there is a necessity? This is an emergency. How is it that we still do not have light? I, I don't understand. Caring for Melissa is difficult. But it's a routine that for her mother has become as natural as breathing. It is a part of me. I don't even need to check the clock to know that she needs to be fed and have her diaper change. She, how she is. She's still my daughter and I love her. I adore her. And if I have to give her my last drop of blood, I will. Still, she prays. The first thing I do before I go to sleep is I pray. I ask God, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary for her health and for them to take care of her. I wish to have a strong generator that powers the entire house and gasoline to fuel it. But the answer to her prayers would be to have the electricity return to her home. Getting power back will mean everything to me. I will stop hearing the sounds of the generator. I don't have to worry about the gasoline. Complete happiness. I spoke with the Rios Rivera family right after the power was turned back on, and they said for them it's still a bit surreal. However, Martha says she continues to pray for her neighbors and fellow Puerto Ricans that they will soon get power back as well. In the broadcast center, Olivia Richard, Cronkite News.